Hi guys, so I've not done an unboxing video for a while, so <clears throat> I thought I'd do one today. Got an absolute bargain on eBay last week, or the week before. Um, these Retivis, um, what are they? I think the Retivis R888, um, basically a, a variant of the BF888 from Bowfeng. Um, now these were on eBay at £5 each, so I, I just I just thought I'll order four of them. Um, so I got four for just under 20 quid like that. It was at £19.96 all in all. I just thought they'd be handy for uh, for testing with, um, handy for the kids camping and uh, I just thought they were just too good a price to leave there really. So I got four of them. They came um, from Hong Kong in like a week and um, so I was really surprised how quick they came. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, I'm quite happy with them. They're, they're, they're nice, especially for that price. They're just too good to leave there. So I've got one of the boxes here. Um, it's got the uh, the features reporting number command of English and Chinese function humanism design now God knows what that means um, well I do know what it means it means basically that it's got the little Chinese voice which tells you what channel you're on um, and that's that's all there is to it uh, battery save CTCSS and DCS um, I'm not sure whether the battery save is actually there but they do have uh, CTCSS and DCS codes scrambler um, no, it isn't there. I've I've tried it. It's the Beat Shift um, scrambler, and it isn't there. I've tried it with two pieces of software, and it, it doesn't work. Um, noise reduction circuit. Mm, I, I, I doubt there's one of them on there. FM radio. I've never been able to get the FM radio to work um, on any of these uh, these ten pound or what should be ten pound Chinese radios. So I don't know whether they whether it is there. If anyone can tell me. I'm uh, probably too lazy to read the instructions, but I've never got it working. Long standby time, yeah, I, I left it on all night the other night, and it was still there in the morning. Um, and 16 channels, it certainly has 16 channels. Uh, what's on the side? Is it just the same? Yeah, just the same. You got a bit of a, a Chinese writing on the back there. Hong Kong Retivist Trade Co Limited, uh, and the same feature on the other side. So, so yeah, I was uh, I was really happy with these. <clears throat> Like I say, they say, they came so quick as well. Um, and I was asking someone why they were so cheap. I thought it was a bit suspect, but they said someone told me that when when someone at like a seller on eBay has listed something for so long and it hasn't sold, they have to sell it as used because it's been in the warehouse long. But these were definitely brand new, as you'll see when I open the box, um, and they do work a treat. So move them the ones out of the way, and uh, we'll get to the unboxing. So pretty much uh, the same story as every both and radio inside. You've got um, the user manual there, which I've not, even, I've not even looked in it. Just tells you how to, uh, tells you the basics there, so what the buttons do, um, how to charge the battery, <clears throat> what comes in the pack. Uh, yep, so everything on there does actually come with the pack. Um, basic operation. The features, so squelch, timeout timer, scan, voice prompt, vox, emergency alarm. Again, I've never got that working on these. I'm not sure whether that is actually there. I think it's a myth. Um, battery saver, low battery alert, monitor, which basically is opening the squelch, busy channel lockout, mm. never used that. CTCSS and DCS. Uh, CTCSS and DCS do not cause your conversation to be private and scrambled. It only relieves you from listening to unwanted conversations. Yeah, they've got that right then. And the frequency range, so these are four, <coughs> excuse me, 400 to 470 megahertz, um, 16 channel, um, so it gives you the dimension, dimensions and the weight there, 150 grams. Um, just a little troubleshooting guide there, the warranty card. I don't think anyone's ever going to use a warranty card on something so cheap. So yep, so you've got the manual, which is actually in English, which is pretty good. <clears throat> you've got the wrist strap, which I don't think I've ever used them, but always handy to have. If you're going to give it to the kids, it's safe and dropping it. Um, you've got the battery here, which is a lithium-ion 7.4 volt battery, 1800 milliamp power. Um, it's got some uh, safety warnings on there, and just one, one little... Um, contact their terminal so yeah I've got no way of testing what what whether these batteries are 
1800 milliamp hour, so I don't know. So yeah, battery. Yeah, this uh, this charging unit, which actually comes with the UK plug, but that uh, that wire I doubt is mains mains rated. Um, so I'm not sure how well I trust these. I've not even plugged one in to try it yet. Uh, so yeah, it's a charging unit. <coughs> Oops, sorry about that. <coughs> Stick the antenna. Do you want a little, uh, little silly bow fang antennas? Uh, I don't know if you can see that. UHF 400 to 480 megahertz. I never use the stock antennas. I've got tons of them upstairs in the shack. Just don't use them. Um, and then of course got the radio. Now I've already I've already unboxed this, so I've put the belt clip on already. Um, but you can see the belt clip there. Um, so let me just put the battery in. The battery just slides up there. Should do. Yep, yeah, slides up there, and then clips down. The radio is quite nice. I like the little uh, little coloured PTT on it. You've got the monitor button and your flashlight button. No bow thing would be complete without a novelty flashlight, would it? And we've got the antenna socket there. Um, channel knob switch. Now, the one thing with these, on the AAAS, I don't know if you can see that, you usually have a number which tells you what channel you're on, and this this doesn't. So unless you count, you've got no idea what channel you're on, which I thought was a bit of a pain. You've got the on-off switch there. Microphone socket. Um, the uh, speaker behind there, which is actually decent quality. A little... Uh, little grip grip bit there and of course the belt clip which just screws on like any other bow thing radio so um, I'll put the antenna in. I actually don't use them antennas I'll show you which one I use I use these which you get off eBay really cheap they cost about two pound each and they're much better they're not amazing but they, they are miles better and they, they do work well so I usually uh, usually put these ones on here um, I've tested these out on, on a couple of local repeaters and they do work so so yeah. So I'll clear this stuff out of the way and I'll just show you the uh I'll just show you the four radios again. One of the other good things about these radios is they're compatible with all the Bofeng um um accessories. So I've got it in the little uh holster here. I've got one of the little cheap speaker mics plugged in and a really small um UHF antenna. I think it might actually be a dual bander actually um, for the car. So if you're on a hill, um, you know you can uh, you can take these portable, absolutely no problem. All the accessories fit, so you don't have to go. You know you don't have to get a cheap radio and spend loads of money on accessories if you've already got them. Um, you know they will work. So so it keeps the kit lighter as well. So you can take numerous radios with the same accessories. So I just thought I was pretty handy. Thought I'd uh, I'd show you guys that. Okay, so there you are, all uh, all four of them there, a five for each. I just think it's an absolute bargain. Um, you'll see I've I've put the the different antennas on. I don't use them little stock antennas; they're uh, they're just no good. Um, I know a couple of mates who've had these sort of radios, and when the antennas have come, they've actually looked inside them, and they they're not soldered right and actually faulty. So uh, so yeah, we uh, I usually just take them, swap them straight out. I've got a couple of them them cheap antennas that are actually on the radios upstairs, ready for. If I ever get any of these cheap radios, I can just put them straight on. So, uh, so yeah, as I say, um, I did did program them up. Um, I think I've got this one for um, 70 centimeters simplex. This one for my local 70 centimeter repeaters. That one monit monitors local UHF communications, and that one is monitoring PMR. Um, so, uh, so yeah, they're all programmed up um, and all, all all in use. So just handy to chuck in chuck in the car, chuck in your back pocket. I mean, if you need something easy, or if you're going somewhere and it's raining, and you don't mind it getting damaged or lost or or broken, um, I think I'd still be upset <laughs> to be honest. But if uh, you know, if one of these, if you lost one of these or broke it, you're not going to be too uh, too beat up about it um, at a five or each. So, so yeah, so I'll run back into the shack, and uh, I think we'll I'll show you how to program them. It's dead easy, and we'll do a power test as well. Okay, so I'll, uh, I'll show you how to program these. Um, so first, what you need to do is uh, is get the programming cable, plug it into your computer, and plug it into the radio. Then switch the radio on and turn the radio to channel 16. A lot of these cheap radios don't program unless they're on channel 16, um, so it's important that you do that. Otherwise, you'll get an error message saying that you couldn't access the radio. <coughs> so you click on your chirp software. 
you click on radio download from the radio you select your com port which in my case is com port 3 Bofeng and then it's, uh, it's just a BF888 and then click OK and it'll, uh, it'll clone from the radio once that, that's done it'll bring up the uh, whatever's in the radio these are the factory uh, frequencies um, with all sorts of uh, well, that wind's horrific. Uh, I don't know if you can hear that. Apologies if you can hear the wind in the background. Um, there's all sorts of different um, CTCSS codes, uh, D DCS codes, um, all sorts of stuff in here. So you got your frequency there. Um, you've got your your mode of um, of um, encoding. So whether it's tone squelch, um, D DTCSS. Um, all those sort of things. There you can set your CTCSS code, your tone squelch um, code, your DTCSS code. Um, oh, ones for encoding and ones for um, decoding. So if someone else is using the same thing, uh, the same code, you'd need to set that so you could receive them. Um, I don't know what that is to be honest. That's something to do with the um, the polarity of the DTCSS DTCS code. Um, Cross mode, I've never used that. Uh, duplex, that's if you want a plus or negative um, offset. That's your offset value. Uh, your mode, so whether it's now FM or FM. Uh, power, like I said to you, that doesn't matter. Both of them are exactly the same. And skip. Now, usually if you set that, your beat shift will work and it doesn't. And I've tried this in the official software, tried setting the beat shift and it doesn't, it doesn't work. So. I'll show you how to program a repeater. So I'm going to put my one of my local repeaters in. So the repeater output is uh, 430.9, and then we're going to put um, a tone on. It's a CTCSS. So we'll put the tone on there, and then you set the tone squelch to whatever uh, whatever your repeater is. In this case, it's 82.5. Now you don't need to bother with any of these because um, none of these are being used so the only mode of encoding that will be used is the one that's set in there so tone is set in there so the only method of, um, of encoding will be tone in that column if that makes sense I'm rubbish at explaining things um, we don't need any of this <coughs> we'll change that to that your duplex um, in this case it's a plus and it's 7.6 high power and we'll just turn that skip off so once you've got that in and you're happy with that um, you're ready to, to upload it to the radio so I've programmed in a repeater there um, this stuff I'm not going to bother with see if we can delete that yeah so we'll delete that um, if you wanted to put the calling frequency in you just put that in there you don't want any uh, any mode of encoding um, you don't want any duplex any offset and uh, like I say, that doesn't that doesn't matter whether you have it on low or high. It's exactly the same. So we've got a repeater in there and the 70 centimeter calling frequency. Um, so you just click radio, upload to radio, check that your com port, your model and uh, make are right again, and just click OK. And it's uploaded to the radio, so you can unplug it and uh, you're ready to go. Okay, so power test. Obviously, not expecting much from these. Um, one other thing to know, in, in my experience with the Triple Eight S's, with these, and with the um, Pofung GT One, which are all these basically the same radio, there is no high and low power setting. Um, the manual will tell you there is, um, and the specifications will tell you there is, but there isn't. You can you can change it in the in the software in the programming software, but. The output power is always the same, and it's uh, definitely not the four watts that's advertised. Um, you see a lot of eBay adverts where they have the power listed as four watt and one watt, and that's just not the case. Um, so I've got it plugged into the uh, this little GY five six one frequency meter here, um, which is pretty accurate. It's not spot on as you'll see, but it, it, it does the job, um, you know. So I'll just switch that on. Um, we've got the radio set on. Uh, 433500 the 70 centimeter colon channel so we'll key up 
Yep, so you can see the uh, the frequency um, calibration is slightly out, but the power is 2.1 watts. Um, I'm not going to test all these radios, um, but they're all they're all pretty much similar. I will give them that they they usually do all uh, give similar readings, but there's no high and low power, so that is high power, um, and it would read exactly the same on low power as well. So it's just uh, just a note to make when you when you're buying one of these. So. So yeah, so uh, that power, uh, don't be put off by it, if you're on a hilltop, you'd, uh, you'd definitely get a few miles out of it. Um, I can get into um, a couple of my repeaters, one of them is about 12 miles away, and I can get into it um, no problem at all. Quite a good signal, I did a test the other night with a friend of mine. So, uh, so yeah, don't be put off by the low power, they are a really handy radio. Um, you know, if you want a quality handheld, then this probably isn't the one for you, but if you want a handheld that, that does the job, and you don't mind breaking or losing then this is uh, definitely for you so uh, so yeah that's all I've got for you guys uh, stay tuned I'll do another un unboxing over the next coming weeks and um, I've got to put a couple more power test videos to do and uh, and yeah 7-3 for now and um, don't forget to like rate and subscribe and I'll catch you further down thanks for watching